Today's video, we're taking a very refreshing look at this idea of food addiction, sugar addiction, addiction to processed foods, all these scaremongering tactics you hear on, out on the media, like, don't ever eat these things, they're terrible. I hate this message because it paints you as this weak human that has no control or strength whatsoever against these foods. And the only salvation for you is to give your time and energy towards this dietary dogma that is supposed to assume control for you. You're not, you're not allowed to be in control. You can't be trusted with these sorts of foods. You have to let someone else call the shots for you on whether or not you can have ice cream or a cookie or things like that. Totally against the philosophy here at the Red Delta Project where we believe you're the one who should be in control. Now, over the past couple days, I've been watching over and over this video called Everything You Think You Know About Addiction Is Wrong by Johan Hari. He doesn't talk about food addiction, he talks about substance abuse, but that could be pretty much the same thing. But one of the things he talks about is the way we think about addiction is that there's this substance that's out there and when we ingest it, it creates this chemical trigger, this chemical reaction in our brain. And that chemical reaction is what causes the addiction. And you get this a lot in the dietary world. This graphic's gone around the internet a billion gazillion times, right? It's like, oh my God, sugar's the same thing as cocaine. It should be made illegal. Here's what Johan is saying, is that we ingest something, we have this reaction, the happy juice floods our brain, but that's not what causes the addiction. What's the real purpose uh, cause of the addiction is how we feel about that mental reaction, that neural, the um, chemical reaction in our brain, in relation to the rest of your life. So individuals, like he's saying, supposedly, the way addiction works is if I give everybody here in the theater heroin, everybody becomes a heroin addict or a cocaine addict and stuff. But he's like, that's not what our research is finding. If I gave everybody heroin, some of you would become addicts, some of you would not. The chemical reaction in the brain, same for everybody. What he's found is that how you feel about that reaction in relation to the rest of your life is what's actually dr the driving factor. It's like if you have a very positive life, you feel good about yourself, you have a lot of reasons to get up out of bed in the morning, good, healthy, strong relationships, a lot of self-esteem, you have a lot of good ha hobbies that you engage in that make you happy, your chances of becoming addicted are very low. However, if you're an individual who comes from a broken home, dysfunctional relationships, low self-esteem, you're basically feeling not so good about you or your life most of the time, and suddenly you get some of this substance in you that makes the happy juices go look like crazy in your brain, your brain is like, I am starving for this kind of juice, for this reaction. I need this so bad, gimme, 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 and I will do anything in the world in order to keep it coming in. His, re his findings are that what we should do with addiction in general is here in America, we're backwards. We treat addiction as a criminal act. It's like you take them and you remove them from society. You take away their job, you take away their relationships, you take away anything that made them feel good about their lives and you ostracize them and give them names and put them in jail. He's like, that's the very thing that's going to drive their addiction. It's keeping them in a broken lifestyle that means the next time they get a hit, it's gonna flood them like crazy and they're gonna need it even more. In some countries, what they're doing is an experiment where they're taking addicts and they're reintegrating them into society. They're giving them jobs, building relationships, exposing them to hobbies, and all sorts of great things that can build their life up, a prosperous life, a fulfilling life. And what they're finding is the addiction rate plummets because they don't need it. This story was echoed in Joe DeSina's Spartan Up book, awesome book, go check it out, about these guys who they would smoke pot and junk food and video games all day, and that was kind of how they got their fix. Then they discovered Spartan Race, they started obstacle course racing, and like that was their new thing. It was easy for them to get rid of the other stuff because now they're finding more satisfaction and fulfillment otherwise. So here's the bottom line with this. We have a way out. If you feel like you have to have things, it's not the thing you need. It's the fact that it's probably one of the few things in your life that's so positive. So the, the solution isn't to try and fight that thing, because even if it's not healthy, it's still at least doing you some good, but to build up the rest of your life around it to minimize its effects on your happy juice production in your brain. Build better relationships, get involved in hobbies, improve your ability for your jobs, purpose, meaning, have a strong why. 
all of these things. These are the things that can make your brain gravitate more towards these healthy, productive aspects of your life, and food and sugar and stuff shrinks and fades into the background. But if you fight it, and you give yourself names, and you fight yourself and stuff more, it's just going to fuel the fire even more. So there's a lot to think about here. Check out the video by Johan down below, and let me know your thoughts as well. So then be fit, live free.